Hello everyone and welcome back to another Spear of the Church Invasion video. Every time I am Amish um, comes out with a new video uh, pretending to Spears of the Church, it always gets me really inspired to go back and um, give my Spears build a go. And I've been having a real great time. It's unfortunate that invasions don't come as quickly as you'd like, so there's a lot of waiting around and sort of twiddle your thumbs and whatnot. But when you do get into a good Spears fight, it's all definitely worth the way. So. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have seen Mokalati's recent video, the Invader Tries Dueling Part 2 one, and that gave me a lot of food for thought um, in order to talk about in, in relation to this video. So he was talking about zoning, and when you put shit, more shit on the screen, that is more things for your opponent to think about to dodge. And so opponents who would normally dodge with ease something like an Ultra Greatsword, which I'm using at the moment, they have a really hard time getting around that because you put so much other crap on the screen uh, that you have to, that they have to deal with, and it makes you appreciate the lengths that From Software went to when they designed this covenant and giving the spears the tools they need in order to work with the weapons they have. So you you get your spear fragment and you have the orbs which spawn every 15-20 seconds, I believe. So when when you're running up on someone and their reaction rolling or every single one of your swings. Uh, you, the orbs come up and you, you put the spear fragment down and then they start panic rolling. And it's, it's very interesting actually, because the orbs don't do a lot of damage mo and most people will know the right timing in order to dodge them. However, uh, most of the players I fought against in these fights, they do they don't, they're not familiar with the, the fragment and how much damage it does and how you can't just run into it swinging on me whilst I'm in there. Uh, which is very, very useful. You see these guys, they, again, with the fucking Thrall Hoods, these guys are obviously part-time gankers trying to uh, get through the boss fight. And they they got the, that ganker mentality where it's a case of dogpile the, your opponent and stun lock them to death. But this is not something you can do in the spear fight, and the way I've designed the build is that you come at me with, uh, with my increased poise and my increased absorption, and with my meme damage level weapon I will quite happily win all the trades that you set you throw at me especially when there's three uh, players in the world and especially four players in the world that the easiest fights you'll have with this build are against four players it becomes a cakewalk um, because even if it, when there's one weak link in the chain it, even if you've got three players that are good and you've got one that's terrible you'll take out the terrible player and it's just a case of you've got all this absorption and poise and you've got the big damaging weapons and the regen uh, and it doesn't matter how good you are eventually you'll get caught up in the mix-up between the orbs the fragment and what the fuck ever I'm swinging at you which is absolutely fantastic you see again that the uh, the spears putting in work there uh, uh, one of the other reasons I went back to do my spears build is because I didn't um, upgrade my spear fragment to the divine. And I only had the ritual one, which I've now upgraded, and um, the damage is noticeably better, I believe. Uh, sort of, a, I think, an extra 100 points of AR per you know, hit the opponent is taking. See, now his phantoms are dead, and no, no, that's the game plan out the window. Where the, the methods that you would use to gank outside of this fight mean fucking nothing once your phantoms are dead there's no way you're going the only place you're going is in the ground which is such a such a pleasure to wit to sort of win these fights because you know that these players outside of this boss fight would would dogpile most invaders and they would win the majority of their gangs it doesn't matter that they're terrible just by virtue of the fact that they're using you know this guy had the Farron meme sword and the other guys had the ring knight pair great swords by virtue of that they would win the majority of their gangs but not in this not in this instance, it's very, very pleasing. So again, yet more thrall hoods. <laughs> Every single time. And you sort of... Just stop this fighter PL. You, are, you only wear a thrall hood, thrall hood if you are a fighter PL, or B, you're a ganker. Because no one, no invaders in their right minds wear thrall hoods. At least not in my experience, no invader I've ever met wears the Thrall Hood in all seriousness. All Thrall Hood wearers are gankers. So I don't have any reservation about beating down and going for a tryhard and using all my healing miracles and regen in order to beat these guys. And this this build isn't impossible to beat. I've had my ass handed to me by, by good squads who have used the same tactics that I do. 
So they have these big ultra great swords, the big dick swinging weapons with the massive AR, and they'd have a caster and a, and a healer in order to, um, you know, heal up all the big damage that I do. And then they play passive, uh, refusing to walk into my hyper armor and sort of frustrating me in order to come to them, and they sort of try and stun on me with the big ultra weapons. Where you, although you do have the increased poise by virtue of being the spear, the massive poise damage that the ultra great swords do to you, and if in great enough number, will be able to knock you out. So, in fact, the the best way I found to to fight this build is two players, both of you using ultra great swords. So, when you have just one, like, have a host and just the phantom in the world your poise and absorption increase is fairly minimal. You do get some, um, but th it's not enough that you can survive a big stun lock from two Ultra Great Swords. And that, those are where most of my losses came from, was just the two fairly decent players using big weapons. And obviously they, they you don't give this build space because you have to press your advantage if you get this build down to low enough health. Uh, I'm just going to run away and I'm going to heal that up. Uh, medium heal is fantastic, I, it does about two thirds of, of my health. I've got 45 faith on this build and medium heal would do two thirds of my health. And so combine that with my triple stack regen with Bountiful Light, Yorska's Chime. It's, I'm able to heal that up in no time. So if you press your advantage, you get me in a stun lock and I try and roll out of it, you chase me down, you ignore the fucking Guardian, you chase me down and you bully the fuck out of me. That's the way you, you beat this build. And don't fucking summon patches. I mean, these, this, this fight here, you, <laughs> patches is useless and it, he might be useful if you're fighting half light. Absolutely, if you're going to fight half light, if you're playing offline and you need some help, summon patches by all means. But if you're playing online and you're going to play against a decent person, do not summon him. Because all you will do is you will buff the spear. Um, although, you know, buff the spear a bit. And he will... You will, Not only do you buff the spear, but you also buff the painting guardians that spawn in. So that means it's less likely that you're going to be able to kill that guy before the spear invades. And if the spear is quick off the mark, he will come to the rescue of the guardian and put you in the fucking mix-up. And if you do manage to get the spear down to half health and keep the Peyton Guardian alive, then you've got a 3v1 in your hands. What, 3v2 with patches there? But again, he doesn't do enough damage to make a difference, and then you're going to have two Peyton Guardians casting heal on me, as well as my own healing miracles, and it just becomes a nightmare. So do not, whatever you do, summon patches, unless you're playing offline. Really fucking bad idea. So another thing I was messing around with um, was using some of the sword rings, like the it's not sorry, the sword rings, the the Lloyd's rings, either the Lloyd sword ring or the Lloyd shield ring, uh, because you start off with full health, obviously, and I can because I can regen my health quite handily. Uh, you probably get a lot more use out of the sword and the uh, shield ring as you than you would at a normal in a normal invasion. And obviously, if people are all sort of gut ganging up around you with their big weapons, you're going to want to be able to take as much damage as possible. And combine the shield ring absorption with the already increased absorption you get from being a spear, then all of a sudden, that one big mix-up is going to mean fuck all. And I'd rather use that so I can take one big trade than the increase, because my damage is already pretty good. I don't need the extra damage from the, from the sword ring, although it would be nice. Um, the, sh the shield ring is far more useful. The trick that I've learned from I Am Amish, you throw your spears down and they can't come into the spears without taking a, a decent amount of damage and they'll get stunned out of whatever they're doing. So you throw that down and then you can sit quite happily sit there and cast heal in their face and they can do fuck all about it. You see, the, these two Although they're, t they're quite bad players, the the two Ultra Great Swords do enough damage to me that I have to think about, really think about what I'm doing, and um, not letting them get on top of me. Fortunately, <laughs> the host dies to uh, the Guardian. Always get a big smile on my face. I fucked up there. I was <laughs> fumbling with my buttons. I was trying to put on the uh, the Yorshka. Not the Yorshka, the uh, the Filianor regen. So I just 
I'll medium heal on myself at full, heal, full health. Yeah, I always get a big smile on my face whenever I see multiple people in, in these fights. Because the 1v1s um, can be a pain in the ass, but the majority of players doing this 1v1 are not that skilled, and you'll just quite happily bulldoze them. At least the, the fights that I've had. I, I'm sure against against good dueling players, the the 1v1s would be quite nasty. But against the PvE players, it's just a it's just a massacre. Get shiv, son. I've been quite fortunate. I haven't had any hate mail, nor have I had m many disconnects. The m I don't know whether it's because I'm too quick <laughs> when it comes down to chasing the solo host, and they don't have uh, a chance to disconnect, or or what. But uh, most people I thought have, fought, have stuck out to the end, which is. Um, very noble of them. I've had a few people disconnect as soon as I've spawned in. I don't know whether that was people that I fought before uh, and didn't want the hassle of fighting me, or people that just wanted to fight Half-Life. I'm really not sure. And one thing, I've known, I don't know if you guys know this, but the, the Spear Fragment, I think it's just uh, a feature of the Divine Spear Fragment. With the Ritual one, you always spawned a row of spears that would go in the direction you were pointing when you cast, used the item. Whereas with the Divine one, sometimes you'll get the row of spears, sometimes you'll get like a, just a, a circular row of spears around you. I, I'm not sure what, what the difference is. Is it, do they move in the direction of, the, of your opponent? So if you've got, your opponent is right next to you and you use the spear fragment, it only surrounds you with spears as opposed to sending out a row. I'm really not sure how it works. It seems to be very inconsistent. Not that it makes much of a difference, because you're using this for zoning uh, in order to force people to panic roll or to get away from you, so you can either get a heal off or protect uh, the Guardian. Another interesting point, actually, um, when you defeat someone, if they... I believe you can still invade people when they are unembered. Um, in this fight. I think that's how it works. So if you beat people who are unembered, you will say it will say duty fulfilled uh, as you kill your opponent. Whereas if they're embered it will say host of embers destroyed, which I thought was quite interesting. I don't, I've never seen that phenomenon before. So the weapon combinations that I'm using, I, I, I explained this in my previous video when I when I made this build. Um, I'm using these two weapons because they are the the best weapons to have blessed infused. Because I wanted to do triple stack regen with two blessed weapons, uh, princess ring, uh, and with the filian or charm. These are the best weapons to have blessed infused and still get good damage out of them. And this is by virtue of the fact that they have innate lightning damage as well. So when you blessed infuse it, not only did your physical um, attribute scale with faith, but your, the lightning portion of it will also scale with faith as well, which is not true if you were to use any of the physical scaling, um, what do you call it, uh, infusions. It, these, this would also work lightning infused, but I, I wanted to take advantage of the passive regen, so I went with blessed. And the, the Lothring Art Ultra Great Sword is, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I really enjoy using Ultras. Uh, it's just the damage is astronomical. I'm, I'm nearing 700 AR at this point. I've, I've only got 45 faith, and the base stats just for the for the weapon itself, and I'm still getting just this is like meta tier damage um, that I'm kicking out here. It's absolutely fantastic. What would be more effective, I'm sure, is if you uh, had it maybe heavy infused and refined. I, I can't remember what the best infusion is, and then you put lightning blade on it. That would be better damage than blessed, but you wouldn't get the advantage of the passive region. And the Dragon Slayer Axe is, again, it's the same concept. It's because it's got the innate lightning damage. Both of those um, damage stats will scale with faith when you put the best infusion on it. And that one's getting about 500, just over 500, no, 510, I think, which is quite decent. Drake Blood Greatsword is also another one where, which will work well, and you can get a fairly decent hour out of that. But I just haven't felt the need to use it, in all honesty. And the thing is, the, the, the offhand Dragon Slayer Axe, it, it's... The axes are good for... I think they're quite good for roll catching. Against Panic Rollers, the axe is fantastic, because it's got a fair amount of reach, 
and a fair amount of damage. And it, it's one of those things that comes up quite reasonably quickly and you can get a good roll catch chain going. Uh, but against the better players, axes are pretty mediocre at best. But then this feeds back into the uh, zoning capabilities that you give yourself as by virtue of being a spear. So although in a neutral situation, uh, and your opponent will be able to reaction roll both of these weapons that I'm holding using the orbs and the spear fragment to my advantage that forces the panic rolls I th what Mocha was talking about in his video is that you win whenever you force your opponent to roll out of your attack you win that neutral game uh, you, although you may not do damage to them you won that encounter and the more you force them to roll out of your attack the more likely you are to catch them with a subsequent attack uh, which is what I took from the meaning that I took from that video, and it, it's it's a tactic that I've employed a lot in my fights uh, recently. Which is the reason I got I'm so enamoured with dual wielding weapons and using Mocha's hand axe build. It, it's bloody fun because it's the mix-ups that that does the work. Because the your opponent won't be able to guess what's going to be swinging at you because most people are just looking for that first initial movement so they can reaction roll you. But if you you mix up your timings uh, and the move set. It, it really, really, really puts even really good players on edge. I mean, I fought some really excellent players, both in the arena and in people's streams and things like that. And you, you sort of, <laughs> they, they, they're left guessing about what you're going to be doing. And because if you've got a hyper armor option with the ultra great sword and a quick option, either the hand axe or a spear or a straight sword or whatever, they don't know whether they can go. They, they are safe to go in for a trade or whether they have to roll away or. Or what? It, it, it's absolutely brilliant. I urge everyone to give it a go. The sort of the conventional sword and shield um, thing doesn't really do it for me anymore. So I think this is this is one of my losses, and it was an excellent fight. These guys were really good sports. I really enjoyed this fight. Um, I think it's important, sort of speaking on a, on a meta level for the mo um, for, the, for here, we should as you sort of Dark Souls YouTubers be putting more of our losses into these videos because it's we need to accurately represent what what happens in these fights and in invasions and we lose a lot of invasions I mean I don't care how good you are we lose a lot less we obviously will lose less than when we first started invading obviously we we spent two and a half years in this game but it's important to remember these fights and to learn from them and to show others that you know it's all very good, well and good, having this flashy montage of us getting super slick uh, parries or backstabs or 20-man gank spanks or whatever, but we need to accurately represent the reality of the situation. Because it, it makes me feel better seeing other other players lose and seeing good players lose. That's why I quite like Chase the Bro videos, because he will occasionally pepper in um, fights where he gets his ass fucking handed to him and stuff like that. Um, and that's, I enjoyed Posse Slayer's um, last video that he did about Gang City. I thought, what was it called? The, the demographics of Gang City. And he showed his ass getting fucking handed to him multiple times by the same people um, before finally getting the win. And that's that's comfortting, you know, because very often times I get frustrated when I when I don't do well. And when I see one of Posse's videos, montages where he's doing these slick fucking pivot parry backstab things. And like ravioli steps and stuff, and it makes you makes you think that oh, he does that in every invasion. Where in reality, most of it is just getting bulldozed by um, shithead gang squads. <laughs> but there it is. I th I, yeah, we need to um, appreciate our losses more. Show those off. Show the ugly side. So I'll let the rest of this uh, fight play out. I hope you've enjoyed this. I I'm going to keep coming back to the Spears fights. Um, Whenever there's a sale on, or if we do a return to Lothric event, if that's ever going to happen, I hope it does, uh, I'm gonna, I'll dig into the spear fights again, and maybe I'll get some more footage. But I'm, I'm working on a soul level 90 build at the moment, so that's where my attention is going to be focused. So, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you later. Receives all things conjoined. The past, the future, and the present. Everything flows, and all is connected. This eye is not merely seeing reality.